Hi, for this problem, what we're going to do is we're going to look at a quadratic word problem. So for this one, what we have, a ball is thrown vertically upward from the top of a building with an initial velocity of 128 feet per second. The height in feet of the ball off the ground after t seconds is modeled by the equation h equals 144 plus 128 t minus 16 t squared, where h represents the height in feet of the ball off the ground after a set amount of time t. So I have a couple different questions that I'm going to address from this because there are a lot of things that could be asked of this. Um, the first one asks, after how many seconds will the ball pass the top of the building? So if it helps you, you can always draw a picture to think about this. So we have a building, and on top of this building we have a person standing up here. And he's going to throw a ball. And so when he throws the ball up, it's going to travel upward, and then it's going to come back down. And eventually, it will hit the ground. So eventually this will hit the ground. So what we are looking for here for this first problem is we're looking for when does it become even with the top of the building again. So we're looking for when does it become even. So we're looking for this point right here. So if you think about it, our height here is 144. And so our height when it becomes even is also going to be 144. So what we are going to do is we're simply going to take 144 and replace h with it. So we're going to take h and replace it with 144. And so what happens with this one, because it's even, um, this was the initial height right here. This was the initial height that it took off from, um, is what the 144 represents. So if I subtract the 144 from both sides, because remember with a quadratic, we always want to get it equal to zero and put it in standard form no matter which method we use to solve. Okay, so then what we're going to do is I'm going to do two steps at once right here. I'm going to cancel this out and say that this is zero. And I'm going to look at these two values. Since I don't have a constant term left, all I have is two t terms, I'm going to look at these two terms and figure out what do they have in common. So with this, I'm going to look at the t squared term first because I want it to be positive. It just makes it easier to solve if this one is positive. So since there's a negative in front of it, I'm going to take out a negative value. So with this, I can divide 128 by 16 eight times, so I'm going to take out a 16. If you started with saying, hey, they're both even, I can take out a 2, and I can take out a 4, you'll eventually get to the point where you would have 16. You can always just try to see, can I divide both of them by 16? Since they both have a t term, I'm going to go ahead and take that out also. So from this one, if I take out a negative 16 and a t, I am left with 1t. For this one, if I divide 128 by negative 16, I end up with negative 8 because remember we took out a negative sign here. So since this one is a positive, really what I'm doing is I'm dividing both of these by negative 16t. So when you're undistributing, when you're taking this value out front, you're really dividing both terms by that same value. So now what we do is we take both of our equations that we have solved and set them equal to zero. So either negative 16t equals zero or t minus eight equals zero. So we end up with t equals zero. Remember, this is our initial throw. So that's when we threw it from the building. That's why the time equals zero, which makes sense. The other one equals eight. So we can say after eight seconds, the ball will hit the ground. All right. Sorry, that's the next one. After eight seconds, the ball will be even with the top of the building again. All right, so for the next one, what we're going to do is now we're going to look at this. Um, basically, what's happening here is this represents our y-axis and this represents our x-axis. So we're looking over time after time has passed until it hits the ground. So that's what we're going to look for here, is we're going to see how many seconds does it take for the ball to actually hit the ground. So this time, if we go back up to our equation, this time our height is going to be zero because now we're talking about how many um, feet is it off the ground. Well, if it's on the ground, it's zero feet off the top of the ground. So for this one, we would end up with zero equals 
144 plus 128t minus 16t squared. And you have a couple different options here. Um, first thing that you want to do is get it in standard form where the t squared term is first and you want it to be positive. For this one, I want to see if it can factor. So I want to see if 144, 128, and negative 16 have anything in common. And if they do, I'm going to take it out. If they don't, I would advise using the quadratic formula here. So you can always use the quadratic formula. You can't always factor. So this one I know is factorable, so that's the method that I'm going to use. But if it wasn't, if I couldn't take something in here to go in evenly and I couldn't get it to factor, um, then I would use the quadratic formula because the quadratic formula works 100% of the time in solving quadratic equations. Factoring only works sometimes. So if we look at this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the negative 16 out of all of these because I want the t squared term to be positive. So I'm just reordering it so that this term is first because remember standard form is what we want to get it into, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. I know we're using t, but it's the same thing. And it's easiest if your leading coefficient is positive. So I'm going to go ahead and take the negative 16 out. When I do that, I'm left with t squared here. I'm going to divide 128 by negative 16. And remember from the last problem, we had already done that. And so we know that that's negative 8t. And then I'm going to take 144 divided by negative 16. And this one ends up giving us 9. And it would be negative 9. So negative 9 times negative 16 gives me positive 144. Like I said, um, you can start with smaller numbers like 2 or 4 or 8, and then just keep going until you can't take anything else out. So what really happens here is this is just going to go away because of the fact that it's a constant term. And if I take 0 and divide it by negative 16, I could have just as easily divided every single thing up here by negative 16 to get rid of it at the beginning. Um, but I just chose not to. So really, this is going to go away. It's not going to impact it because the only place it has variables is inside of here. So what we're going to do is we're going to look for two numbers that multiply together to give me negative 9 that add up to be negative 8. So in this case, it would be negative 9 and positive 1. Okay. Um, so with this, we would have t minus 9 and t plus 1. So if we solve this, we could see that t is going to be 9 or t is negative 1. It doesn't make sense to have a negative time. Basically, if we go back up here to the picture, is if this were thrown from the ground, that's what that represents. So if it were thrown from the ground, um, that's why it's negative. Since we're throwing it from an initial height of 144 feet, it does impact that. So we can say after 9 seconds... the ball hits the ground. So they may also ask you a question like this with, what is the maximum height um, that the ball reaches? So it may want to know what is the maximum height. So if we look at this, we're trying to figure out at what point did the turning point happen? Remember, that is known as the vertex. The maximum is the vertex. And to get the x coordinate, we would just use negative b over 2a. So if we go back up here to our equation, this would be my A term, the negative 16. This would be my B term, and this would be my C term since it's not written in standard form. So all I have to do is pull out those numbers. And um, so with this, the B term would be 128. So I would have negative 128 divided by 2 times negative 16. And this ends up giving me 4. So this is the time when it reaches the max. So it will spend 4 seconds going upward, and then it turns and starts going back towards the ground. So what we would do now is, in order to find our height, we would just plug it in. So we would say that height is 144 plus 128 times our time, which was 4, minus 16 times 4 squared. And if we simplify this, this gives us 144. 128 times 4 gives me 512. 
And then if I do negative 16 times positive 16, it gives me negative 256. And so if I work this out, it gives me 400 feet. So the ball will reach a maximum height of 400 feet. So just to recap, if it says equal to the top of the building, you're going to set the heights equal and you're going to cancel those out. Um, if it says how long before it reaches the ground, you're going to replace the height with zero. Like I said, quadratic formula will always work. This method, factoring, doesn't always work. It has to be factorable in order to be able to factor it. And then the maximum height is just another name for the vertex, and the vertex always occurs at the x-coordinate negative b over 2a. And then to find the y-coordinate, you simply just plug it back in. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics you would like to see, let me know that as well.